coming up on The World Today. Pfizer and Moderna say they are testing their vaccines against the new coronavirus variant. The EU urges countries to lift UK travel bans as more than 1,500 lorry drivers remain stranded. Plus, four doctors killed in a Kabul car bombing. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Akaite Afia. Pfizer and Moderna say they are testing their coronavirus vaccines to see if they work against the new variant of the virus that's recently been found in the United Kingdom and other countries. Pfizer says it is now generating data on how well blood samples from people immunized with its vaccine may be able to neutralize the new strain from the UK. Moderna says it expects immunity from its vaccine to protect against the variants and is performing more tests in the coming weeks to confirm. The strain, referred to by some experts as the B117 lineage, is not the first new variant of the pandemic virus to emerge, but it is said to be up to 70% more transmissible than the previously dominant strain in the UK. The European Commission has recommended that travel bans imposed by EU countries on the UK to contain a new variant of the coronavirus should end to allow freight and essential travel to resume and let people return home. The EU Commission says its member states should allow people to travel to their country of residence, providing they take a COVID-19 test or self-isolate. However, member states are free to set their own rules on border controls and may continue with their own policies. Almost every EU member state has now stopped travel from the UK amid fears over the virus mutation. And the EU has been in talks about how to recommend a united response. Meanwhile, more than 1,500 lorries are stuck in Kent in southeast England as UK and French leaders try to reach an agreement on reopening the French border. France shut its UK border for 48 hours on Sunday amid the fears of a new coronavirus variant. More than 50 countries have now banned UK arrivals. Some countries such as Spain, Portugal and Hungary are only allowing their residents to return home. Our correspondent in London, Juliana Olayinka, joins us now for more. Juliana, it's good to see you. So Lovely it's been a couple... Afternoon. It's been a couple of tough days for the UK with this new variant and travel bans. What more can you tell us at this point in time? Well, what I can tell you is that there's very little uh, festive cheer in Britain in the run-up uh, to Christmas. The COVID-19 uh, crisis here in Britain has dramatically escalated and uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's intro is pretty full as there are several uh, serious issues of contention that we have to deal with. First, I heard you speaking about uh, the issue that we have on ports. This is because on Saturday afternoon, just to uh, remind our viewers, Boris Johnson announced um, this new uh, variant a strain of COVID that is more transmissible, uh, more deadly, 70% um, of an increase from the previous strain of COVID-19. Uh, following uh, that announcement on Saturday afternoon, uh, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron put this travel ban, which included freight. So what we've seen, and I'm sure there are some pictures here that we can show, is that there have been lorries on the queues on both sides um, of the channel in Dover and in Calais for about 48 hours. Now that 48 hours is supposed to expire tonight but there are ongoing discussions between French officials and British officials as to how uh, they can let these lorries through. There have been some talks about giving on the spot COVID-19 tests. The problem is how can we get uh, the tests to individuals? I think a lot of these hauliers have realised that Christmas is essentially cancelled uh, for them. That's that. The travel ban that you were also speaking about is a serious issue. The last uh, country I checked was China. Uh, China, Canada, as well as all of our European uh, counterparts um, have stopped issuing visas. China say they no longer will be accepting uh, passengers coming in and out of the UK. That has sent uh, the stock uh, market tumbling um, at intraday and 
that was also the case at early trading, but also inside of the UK. So we have heard from the first ministers of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. They do not want people in tier four uh, restrictions traveling um, to those parts of the country. So at the moment, there are about 16 million people, including myself, who are in a tier four region, which basically means that you're in a lockdown. Uh, all of the chief scientific advisors uh, that are consulting with the government are asking Boris Johnson to urgently uh, put the entire nation into a lockdown. This is uh, clearly spreading out of control. And the last news line that we have is now whether or not school children will be able to go back to school in January. This is a serious issue uh, because uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said after the huge disruption we had in early spring that it was the national security, a national priority to make sure that children could return to school in January. That appears not to be uh, the case at the moment, but it is a developing story. And as I said, unfortunately, all of the festive cheer has been completely wiped away by COVID once again. Well, Juliana, thank you so much for joining us today. And please do stay safe out there. Thank you. Amid worries of the new coronavirus variant, experts say maintaining a stricter level of social distancing is key to combating transmission. The University of Leicester, Dr. Julian Tang, says the variant of COVID-19 found in the UK is no more severe than earlier strains, but much more easily transmitted between people. Even with the same level of severity, he says it would put more pressure on healthcare systems. Well, Britain isn't the only country facing isolation. Israel, Turkey, Germany, Saudi Arabia, and Switzerland are among countries that have halted air travel to and from South Africa following the announcement that a new variant of the COVID-19 virus is driving South Africa's resurgence of the disease, with higher numbers of confirmed cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. According to health officials and scientists leading the country's virus strategy, the new variant, known as 501.V2, is dominant among recent confirmed infections in South Africa's current wave. The new strain, different from the one in the United Kingdom, appears to be more infectious than the original virus. South African scientists are studying if, vac if the vaccines against COVID-19 will also offer protection against the new strain. Our South Africa Bureau Chief, Betty Dibia, joins us now to discuss the situation in South Africa. Betty, thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. So scientists say this strain is different than the one in the UK, but what more can we know at this time? All right. Well, it looks like we are having issues connecting with Betty there. Um, officials in. All right. I do believe that she is back. Betty, are you here with us? I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can. So scientists say this right. strain uh, is different than the one in the UK. So what more do we know at this time? All right, from the South African scientists, I don't know what the scientists in the UK are saying. We understand it is not a new strain. It is a variant of what we have. And, and, and this particular variant is, uh, uh, it's more uh, replicative efficient, it's more virulent, that's a higher viral level. Uh, and it's also, it, it also has um, a higher case rates. Well, what are authorities doing to contain now, the spread? Um, oh. But the health okay. minister has uh, a short... Can you still hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Go ahead. All right. But, but the health minister has assured the people not to panic just yet because we don't know if this variant and not a strain now is is more dangerous, is more deadly than, than what we already have. And he insists that the treatment or management, the treatment management plan of the, of the country remains the same for now till the scientists advise otherwise. And he's also appealing to the people to place more emphasis on the non-pharmaceutical interventions, you know, the, the san hand sanitizing, the 
wearing of the face masks, especially keeping the social or physical distance and moving when only when it's important for you or when it's really necessary for you to do. And then this uh, festive period where there's a lot of movement to homesteads and, and, and the likes and gatherings, people need to be more careful. Well, Betty, are there any plans to ban travel from the UK, who is also battling a strain of its own? I'm not quite sure, but what I know is that there are some countries thinking of holding back or, or reducing flights from their country into South Africa, just like uh, they're doing to the UK. I know uh, uh, Germany, for example, is looking at uh, reducing flights, but there was a flight from Germany into the country today, according to the German uh, ambassador who was speaking earlier today. But uh, uh, Germany, for example, is looking at reducing flights or even holding back flights till I think the first week of January into South Africa, till we actually know what we're dealing with. So um, that may happen. And if for example, locally within the country, uh, the numbers really get out of hand as, as we're seeing. We're seeing an average of 9,000 cases, confirmed cases daily. Um, maybe there may be even a, a ban on movement within, probably for a period to ensure that uh, we keep the numbers down and see whether you know this will go away much, much sooner you know, than, than we're seeing. But there's a general worry, especially in January, um, regarding how the numbers will go if it's a already high at this point. But but going to your question again, some countries may, but the only country that I can confirm with heard from is, is Germany looking at and, and we also know that many Germans have already booked their holiday in the country because we're in summer here in South Africa compared to Europe where it's, it's quite cold and, and, and then uh, probably uh, in the Americas. But um, they're, they're, they're really worried, uh, but they're trying to be careful to balance not limiting people too much um, uh, but things may change depending on how the numbers go all right well betty thank you so much for joining us and please do stay safe out there Officials in Germany say it is highly likely that the mutation of the coronavirus has been found in Britain ha also exists in Germany, although it has not shown up in data just yet. The head of the Robert Koch Institute, Health Institute Lothar Wheeler, is appealing to Germans to keep contact with other people to an absolute minimum and not to travel over Christmas to try to slow the spread of the coronavirus. The total number of COVID-19 cases in Germany surpassed 1.51 million on Monday. The country has also recorded over 26,275 deaths. The Catholic Church has announced that the use of COVID-19 vaccines developed using cell lines derived from aborted fetuses is morally acceptable. The Vatican says in the absence of any alternative, such vaccines can be used in good conscience. It adds that this would not constitute formal cooperation with the terminations that did take place. Several vaccine candidates were developed using cells derived from fetuses aborted decades ago. However, no fetal cells are present in any of the vaccines. The issue of whether to accept a coronavirus vaccine has divided some members of the clergy, with the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops arguing in favor last week. The first positive cases of coronavirus have been detected in Antarctica at a Chilean army base. According to local media, the Chilean army reported 36 personnel at its Bernardo Riquelme O'Higgins base had tested positive. The continent had been the only one free of COVID-19 cases before this outbreak. Still to come on the program. Many swap planes for a glampcation experience in Singapore's Changi Airport. Details in a moment. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The U.S. Congress has passed a long-awaited $900 billion package 
of coronavirus pandemic aid after months of political wrangling. Senators approved the bill late on Monday, hours after it was passed by the House of Representatives. The aid includes direct payments for many Americans and support for businesses and unemployment programs. Our Washington, D.T. correspondent Maria Bird has more on the story. U.S. Congress rushes to pass huge coronavirus relief bill, which will provide a $600 payment for most Americans. In consultation with our committees, the four leaders of the Senate and the House finalized an agreement. There will be another major rescue package for the American people. As our citizens continue battling this coronavirus, this holiday season, they will not be fighting alone. Having been achieved, the motion to concur is agreed to. A $900 billion stimulus package will send billions of dollars to American households and businesses grappling with the economic and health toll of the pandemic. It doesn't go all the way, but it takes us down the path, a first step. It's not perfect, but it reflects a fair compromise that includes funding for many important priorities at home and abroad and vital assistance for all those negatively impacted by the uh, coronavirus pandemic. This package comes as millions of Americans await the opportunity to take the COVID-19 vaccine. President-elect Joe Biden is showing his trust in the vaccine and is leading the way for American trust. This is, is great hope. I'm doing this to demonstrate that people should be prepared when it's available to take the vaccine. There's nothing to worry about. I'm looking forward to the second shot. So is Jill. She's had her shot earlier today. She loves shots. I know. In the meantime, I know I don't want to sound like a sour note here, but uh, I hope people listen to all the experts from the Dr. Fauci's on talking about the need to wear masks during this Christmas and New Year's holidays, wear masks, socially distance. And uh, and if you don't have to travel, don't travel. Don't travel. It's really important because we're still in the thick of this. The U.S. continues to have high rates of virus spread. And the question is, will the vaccine decrease the COVID-19 mortality rate in the U.S.? From Washington, Maria Bird, Channel Television News. Police say four doctors working at a prison in the Afghan capital, Kabul, are among five people killed in a bomb attached to their car. Three of the dead were women. The fifth were their, were their male colleague's driver. The doctors were traveling to Poli Chakri prison, where they worked with a magnetic bomb detonated. No group has said it carried out the bombing. Dozens of militant attacks in Kabul have left more than 100 people dead in the past two months. Journalists, activists, and other political figures have been targeted. Several recent attacks on individuals have used sticky bombs attached to vehicles by magnets. Levels of violence in the country have remained high despite the start of negotiations between Afghan and Taliban officials. The body of Karima Balok, a Pakistani human rights activist, has been found in Toronto, Canada, where she had been living for five years in exile. The 37-year-old, a campaigner from the restive region of Balochistan in western Pakistan, was a vocal critic of the Pakistani military and state. She left Pakistan in 2015 after terrorism charges were leveled against her. Toronto police issued an appeal after she went missing on Sunday and later confirmed that her body had been found. Police say, say there doesn't seem to be any suspicious circumstances. But according to a close friend, Johar Balak, a close friend and fellow activist who also lives in Toronto, Ms. Balak had recently received anonymous threats warning someone would send her a Christmas gift and teach her a lesson. 
The United Nations has appealed for $156 million to help tens of thousands of refugees who fled fighting in Ethiopia's Tigray and is striving to get a team on the ground to investigate alleged human rights violations, including a mass killing in the region, one of the many appalling human rights abuses which could amount to war crimes. Ethiopia's army has been fighting rebellious forces in the northern Tigray region for over six weeks in a conflict that has displaced close to a million people. Access for humanitarian workers has until recent days been impossible and rights workers are now seeking access on the ground to verify reports. Releasing together with 30 humanitarian partners uh, an urgent appeal for $156 million to support refugees fleeing Ethiopia's Tigray crisis. The requested funds are needed to meet the critical humanitarian needs of Ethiopian refugees fleeing the conflict in Tigray throughout the first half of 2021. This appeal will also strengthen preparedness to receive refugees in other countries in the region in case of further refugee movements. Currently, many refugees remain in overcrowded conditions without proper facilities, and there continues to be a shortage of medicine and other supplies. We have seen a huge demand for family tracing and reunification, education, uh, and for child-friendly spaces and nutritional programs. And finally, staying overnight at an airport is not unheard of, especially if you missed a flight. However, this year end season, some people are willingly choosing to sleep overnight at Singapore's Changi Airport, albeit in luxury tents. With the coronavirus disrupting holiday trips overseas, some Singapore residents have decided to pack their luggage and head to Jewel Changi Airport, where part of the top floor of the airport mall had been transformed into a glamping or glamorous camping grounds, complete with luxury tents decked out with queen-size beds, toiletries, festive Christmas lights, and a cooler box for the holiday mead. I don't know. Later you ask. Because, I mean, usually we, we go out of the country every uh, holiday, but since we uh, can't travel much and it's the school holiday, so I thought, you know, why not uh, do something different for the children? And I think they, they enjoy camping, right? They always, uh, you know, set up tents uh, in our house. So I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, give them this experience. Uh, I mean, it is pretty pricey. When I told my husband, he was like, you know, we could have paid for a hotel, which we did. <laughs> we went for a staycation. Uh, but I told him I think it's more for the kids, not really for us. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's an experience for them and it's something different. So I said, uh, it's okay anyway, the money, instead of going overseas, we just spend it in Singapore. Because as you know, this uh, year, it has been very tough for all of us. Uh, so we wanted to experience uh, uh, closeness at a different level, which is inside a uh, glamping. Uh, instead of uh, like our own house. I will look at the package. Uh, it's important, right? If I say it's quite worth, then I think it's a good experience for the children who never been at camping before. Then I think I will try it. Lah. Well, glamping is definitely a creative way to spend the holidays. That's all for the program. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Akaite Afia.